This is a discussion of the nature of hybrid and blended courses. In the course of this discussion, we'll think about what hybrid is, what blended is, are they the same thing? Many people would say yes and use the words interchangeably, but it's a way for us to think about what we're actually talking about. So at UC Blue Ash, we do have a definition for hybrid courses. We call them hybrid here. And we say that hybrid courses are those in which 25%, but less than 75% or more of the instruction and interaction occurs via electronic communication or equivalent mechanism with the faculty and students physically separated from each other. This is the Higher Learning Commission definition, and essentially it means we meet face-to-face -face and online, and um, the online portion is more than 25%, but less than 75%. So that's not a very clear definition when we're actually thinking practically about designing a course because it's hard to figure out what that between 25 and 75 is. It's nice to have that kind of flexibility, but it also means we have to think about it pretty carefully. The Southern, Southern New Hampshire University does have a definition of what a hybrid course is, and they say very simply that hybrid is the common term for courses that combine face-to-face -face classroom instruction with computer-based learning and essentially a lot's online, and you also have face-to-face. -face. What's actually really interesting about this is that it emphasizes the student demonstration of course objectives. So this is getting more towards the idea of competency and um, competency credentialing and saying uh, this course, it works because students can demonstrate that they can do the course objectives. Now, the University of Wisconsin at Milwaukee has an extensive page on hybrid and blended learning courses and they say again hybrid and blended are names commonly used to describe courses in which some traditional face-to-face -face seat time has been replaced by online learning activities. What's really interesting in this is that it talks about the three key points that it's what there are web-based learning activities that are introduced to complement face-to-face work that the seat time is reduced but not eliminated altogether because then it would be an online course the web-based and face-to-face -face components of the course are designed to interact pedagogically to take advantage of the best features of each and this is where we have to be discipline specific about our decisions and we have to decide for my course what are the in my discipline what are the best features of face-to-face -face that support students most and what are the best features of online that will support my students most so one of the things that you probably noticed or will notice in the other video is that there's sometimes a conflation between technology and pedagogy and this this graphic is a really good example where we have classroom learning in one bubble and then there's all, all this technology all around it. And really, I think it's it might be more functional for us to think about classroom learning and then um, online learning instead of specifying these things as all these technologies. But this does do a good job of saying here are the potential technologies that we can take advantage of outside the classroom. Another way of thinking of this is that people have talked about um, this combination of online learning and face-to-face -face learning as student-centered, meaning that the online stuff can be done at a student's uh, preferred pace and they can um, go back to things that they need before and other students can zoom on, but we do have teacher-led instruction in which we have these face-to-face -face sessions, but then there's also the digital or audio visio, um, video learning and the computer-mediated instruction where there's still stuff that you have to read, the traditional study material, but there's a lot of feedback and reflection and assessment of outcomes that are done via the internet. Now, when we think about the basic structure of this complementary um, uh, mode of learning, we have this idea of before class, during class, and after class. So during is our anchor of face-to-face -face learning. And generally, we want to think of the this uh, a, a unit as before being online and after being online but they have to really support each other so what's done before class before the face-to-face -face meeting that is online has to be used during the class during the face-to-face -face class but you're not done then in a blended learning class you can take advantage of this best of both worlds type of philosophy by saying that what we do during class is then processed after class online where you could have assessments or reflections or further practice. So when we think about these essential structures, it brings up some pretty poignant questions that we need to think about. 
how do we decide what we give before, during, and after? And this helps us think about what's online. How much of this is actually scheduling? In our school, we have Tuesday, Thursday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then single evenings. And that kind of um, it, it structures how we think about what seat time is, because seat time is either an hour and 20 minutes on a Tuesday or a Thursday, or 55 minutes on a Monday, a Wednesday, or a Friday, and how do we combine all that within our 25 to 75% um, structures? How much of this is actually mediated by Blackboard, and does it have to be Blackboard? What are the other things besides Blackboard that I can have for my before and after um, activities, and are some of these things also during class activities where I have group projects where they're all working on a WordPress site together or a, a wiki site together? Does the before and after stuff actually have to be online? Could this be research that they're doing somewhere else in a service learning course or an experiential learning course or something like that? So when I think about the before and after the physical meeting time, it doesn't necessarily have to be exclusively uh, web mediated. And how is this different from flipping? And what is this flipping anyway? And generally one way that people think of it is a scheduling thing that uh, a flipped class essentially means that it's um, according to the traditional schedule of Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Tuesday, Thursday, or a single evening that we continue to meet during the traditional scheduling, and yet there's a, a lot of instruction and review that happens outside of class, usually web-mediated. So we have a lot of questions to think about, and as we think about them, it can also uh, help us think of different possibilities and different ways of structuring the precious time that we have when we're face to face and can have that feeling of community and then also the benefit of self-paced and immediate feedback assessment and individualized instruction that we can get outside of class as well.